morning to everyone. Uh, this is uh, really an opportunity for uh, me to uh, make a few comments about the China trip, but also before uh, I'm out of the country for a few days to give you an opportunity to ask many uh, questions that uh, might be lingering out there. Uh, and so I'm happy to address those questions. I'm pleased to be uh, joined by uh, my Director of Economic Development, Mike Preston, uh, who will be accompanying me to uh, China, uh, or I'll be accompanying him. Uh, but uh, we'll be uh, making that trip together. And our Secretary of Agriculture, uh, Wes Ward, has joined me as well. And the reason I've asked him to be here is because uh, historically we've made these trips uh, overseas to uh, recruit industry businesses uh, for Arkansas. But I added a component uh, to uh, this trip, and that is uh, an opportunity to meet with uh, Chinese government officials uh, in promoting our Arkansas agriculture, including rice and poultry. And so we've uh, not only will we be calling on prospective businesses uh, that we hope to recruit to Arkansas over time, uh, but we'll also be meeting with Arkansas businesses there and also taking the case for Arkansas to directly to the uh, Chinese uh, government. Uh, I'll be meeting with the Vice Minister of Agriculture in Beijing, as well as the Secretary General of Foreign Affairs. Uh, we've asked for these meetings in advance to uh, work through the Consul General to accomplish these. And I think it's a good, uh, without a question, it's a good opportunity for uh, Arkansas to present its case in terms of our rice and poultry and opening up uh, the China markets, which we have some current obstacles in doing. Uh, in addition, uh, we will be uh, in five cities in China over six days on the ground. So as you can see, with a large country as China, uh, we are uh, traveling city to city, uh, not a whole lot of downtime there. We'll be in five cities and four provinces, and we'll be calling on multiple uh, uh, prospects in China. Uh, as well as uh, continuing our relationship with Sun Paper in Shandong Province. Uh, uh, we, uh, you know, while we have uh, uh, their prospect and our project in Arkadelphia that's uh, being developed, we want to continue to build that relationship. They're a good ally for Arkansas uh, within that province, and we want to be able to continue building on that relationship. My view of these trips is that uh, this is uh, an ongoing relationship while I'm governor. Uh, success comes from uh, consistency and action, consistency in having a presence in China, consistency in calling on these businesses and making the case for Arkansas. Uh, so we are looking forward to a good trip. And uh, while we're there, we'll also be meeting with Arkansas businesses, Walmart, Tyson's, Cobb Vantress and the Arkansas uh, rice industry as well. Uh, so uh, with those comments, let me uh, ask Mike if you have anything to say for the trip. Well, thank you, Governor. And uh, it is exciting. It's a good opportunity for us to, to be back in China. Obviously, we had a, a successful trip last time and uh, being able to, uh, to negotiate some of the deal with Sun Paper that ultimately uh, led them to choosing Arkansas as, as their home. Um, when you're doing economic development, relationships matter, uh, and this governor has proven that, that building these relationships are imperative uh, to us doing business, uh, you know, here in the United States, but obviously overseas. Uh, what we learned last time in China is that we have to have a presence there. We continue to have our, uh, our office um, in Shanghai, uh, and it's important for, for myself and for the governor to make sure that Arkansas is known over there. Uh, we want to continue to, to build those relationships and make sure people know where Arkansas is on the map. Another thing we learned there is that, uh, you know, right now Chinese uh, uh, investors, the government, they're looking at, the, um, you know, they kind of ran up to, a, um, you know, out of space for where they're trying to grow in China and they want to continue their growth market. So they're looking for markets outside of China to invest in. And they look at the United States as the most stable market in the world in which to invest. So that tells us that Arkansas has an opportunity. Arkansas has an opportunity to be one of the first states there that can build those relationships to look for investment. So I think that's where you see a company like Sun Paper looking to invest in new markets and looking in the United States. So uh, we're hopeful to capture the momentum that we've had from Sun Paper. 
I can tell you personally we've had an uptick in calls from, from companies who are based in China uh, with an interest in Arkansas, so it gives us more reason to go back and, uh, and, share, and share and tell that Arkansas story. So uh, aside from the 14-hour the flight and about 24 hours of, of traveling in one day, uh, we're very excited about this trip and the prospects that it brings. With that, I turn it over for any questions. Uh, Governor, in the debate Sunday night, uh, a GOP nominee said that he had not uh, sexually assaulted women, that the block would talk, things like that. Uh, since then, a number of women have stepped forward and say, who have said that they were broke or assaulted by the GOP nominee. Uh, two questions. Are they believable? And uh, is it uh, better to have a uh, suspected or acknowledged sexual predator in the White House or Hillary Clinton? Uh, I'm troubled by uh, all of the uh, rhetoric. I'm troubled by uh, the statements uh, that have been made by Donald Trump uh, in terms of uh, women in past decades. Uh, I am not following the current discussions that closely as I prepare for this trip to China. And as I have said, I think we do have uh, two candidates that uh, are both flawed, uh, and the American public just has to evaluate it. Uh, my evaluation is on the uh, big picture items of, of where our economy goes, where we are in fighting ISIS, uh, in terms of the Supreme Court, and, uh, uh, and I also uh, hope that uh, both candidates can, uh, in the third debate, as we get ready for that, uh, concentrate on the serious issues that really affect the American public. Will you be out of the country for the next debate? Uh, depends on when it is. <laughs> yes. I will be out of the country. Can we come with you? <laughs> <laughs> no, is there ever a point where the, it's a deal breaker in, in terms of the party nominee uh, in his behavior? Uh, uh, I mean, his conduct seems to be uh, uh, moving to to a point where it's very difficult, uh, and you've seen we've seen other Republican uh, leaders say this is the point where I, I get off the wagon. You don't know what the future holds, so I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, uh, you know, you just have to uh, evaluate the campaign day by day. I think you can also ask the question for every candidate: Is there a deal breaker out there? Uh, how many emails have to be destroyed? Uh, how many investigations have to be concluded with question marks? Uh, how many uh, uh, comments have to come out from one uh, campaign uh, in reference to uh, religious institutions that raises concerns? So uh, you could argue that there's, there could be deal breakers on both sides. So, you know, I'm, I supported, as you know, uh, Marco Rubio. I supported uh, Mike Huckabee. Uh, but I also pledge, as many people did, to support the nominee of the party. There's a reason you engage in that. And so these are tough times. Campaigns bring out sometimes not the best of people. And so, sure, uh, you know, there's a line that's always crossed. But, uh, you know, you, you, you vote for a team. And uh, in this instance, uh, I look at the future direction of the country, and I've made my decision. Governor, can you comment on the two items thrown off of the ballot today by the Supreme Court? Court reform and casinos. Well, it's my, I haven't read the decisions, but it's my understanding the Supreme Court uh, struck down the uh, ballot titles for the casino amendment and the uh, tort reform initiative. Uh, I respect the court's uh, review of this. Uh, if we've learned anything, that it's very important to have a fair ballot title uh, so that the public can uh, honestly eval evaluate and vote on an initiative. So you just have to accept their opinion. Uh, you know, I think there's always, I mean, I was not in favor of the casino amendment, so I guess in some ways that's good news. Uh, uh, I was neutral on the tort reform amendment, but there is some, always some disappointment whenever uh, the people don't have an opportunity to vote on it, but it teaches you the, the importance of getting it right, uh, both in terms of the signatures and the ballot title to be most informative to the uh, voters. So. Uh, I respect and uh, accept the decision of the court on those two ballot initiatives. Marijuana is staying on the ballot. Uh, any change in heart on whether you'll support it? Uh, no change in heart. Uh, <laughs> uh, still have the opportunity. Consistent. To, to the news. 
you know, per, perhaps there is a, uh, uh, well, I started to make a joke, but I'll withdraw that oh, joke. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, I'm sorry. Um, the, the casino uh, proposal would have written the name of private companies into the Constitution. Do you see or would you support an effort in the legislature to sort of go back into our laws and try to prevent something like that from happening in some legislative way? I would sure be open to ideas on that. Uh, I, I think about our United States Constitution and how difficult it is to amend it. Uh, it is really difficult. Uh, and not that our state constitution should be that difficult, but at the same time, uh, you know, to think about uh, every bit of minutia in our Arkansas Constitution that is generally reserved for legislative enactment. I think we've lost the balance there. And uh, sometimes people have said, well, we'll just go an easier path, they see it, to put an initiative on the ballot. And uh, is it always the best to put uh, that level of detail, names of companies, locations for casinos, uh, in our Arkansas Constitution. I don't like it. So if there's a, uh, you know, if it's a means to have a better balance, I would be open to it. But uh, uh, we'll wait and see what the discussion is. You mentioned, this, this, is, this subject is probably above my pay grade, but uh, you mentioned obstacles for rice and poultry. Are those governmental obstacles for those products? Yes. Yes, the uh, China government, uh, first of all, has uh, still an avian flu uh, ban on our poultry, which is unjustified. Cuba, everybody has lifted it, but China, and we view that as, as uh, uh, an excuse more than a reason, and so that's, that's a barrier for us. Uh, you know, in terms of rice, uh, there is a, uh, uh, an agreement that has not been approved by the highest levels of the China government that would allow access of our rice to China. So that's one barrier that we need to move along. And then secondly, there is a current uh, WTO complaint that's been filed by the United States uh, that uh, raises the issue that uh, China has uh, unreasonable barriers for our uh, agricultural commodities going in. So. It is a governmental challenge that we see in uh, marketing our rice and poultry there. And uh, by me uh, raising the issues with them, hopefully they will address them sooner rather than later. But also when the other issues are resolved, it helps us to open the door more quickly for Arkansas agricultural products. The, the, uh, I think Obama administration official was here uh, uh, discussing the uh, the TPP, uh, I guess a few months ago, and she said that some of those barriers, such as you mentioned, the avian flu, and some of the would likely be removed if the TPP was ratified. Uh, I, I don't haven't heard you discuss your support or, or against the TPP. What What do you think about that? Well, generally, I'm in favor of lowering barriers, increasing trade opportunities because it benefits Arkansas. Uh, you know, if we can open up markets. Uh, we've got entrepreneurs here, whether it's uh, our large retail industries that are already doing business there, but also it's our manufacturing, it's our steel, uh, but primarily agriculture that we want to market. And so if we don't have lower, lowering those trade barriers, then, then we have obstacles to marketing our Arkansas products. Uh, in reference to TPP, it's all about the language, and I, th uh, I think you, you've got to look at that very closely as to whether that's a gr good agreement or not and the best one that we can negotiate. I think that's the point both of uh, Mrs. Clinton and Mr. Trump, that uh, we need to be tougher in our negotiation in the terms of, of what agreements we reach. Uh, but generally, uh, I'm in favor of lowering those tariffs and expanding those trade agreements. Both of the ballot, both of these items were thrown off the ballot today because of their ballot titles. Uh, do you think that that's something the AG's office should have been more, had more scrutiny in the first place to let it even get this far? Well, I'll, I'll let her uh, comment uh, on the specifics of that, but I know that 
in most of the ballot titles, there's a back and forth, there's a constant review. The Attorney General has been very, very diligent about trying to get it right. And if you look back in history, uh, you know, every Attorney General, uh, despite their carefulness, has it reviewed once again by the uh, Arkansas Supreme Court, and uh, they have a different judgment. And so those are, uh, you know, no matter how careful you are, the uh, Supreme Court has a chance to review it. So uh, I know the Attorney General has been very, very diligent in that, and that's just part of the process that we have. You know, there's been some discussions before as to whether these things need to be resolved earlier on in the cycle. You know, here we are one month out, and, uh, you know, it's being struck down. And that's not the Supreme Court's problem because they're following the process that the legislature has enacted. Uh, it is fair to review that as to whether we can tighten it up any, we can, uh, you know, help our citizens out by having these reviews done earlier in the process rather than later. And I believe the ballots have already been printed. I mean, what kind of confusion does that cause for voters? Oh, we're used to it. Uh, it just simply means that those votes will not be counted. Uh, and so uh, that's, that's manageable. Uh, but, uh, you know, there'll be many people that will cast uh, a vote for one of those amendments, but their votes will not be counted because it's been struck down. Just to be clear, do you believe that the actions that Donald Trump described in that video would, would be sexual assault if they happened? Yes. Yes. That does, that's, not enough, uh, that's not enough to concern you enough to, uh, to consider not supporting him, then? I've already articulated my view on that. Uh, I, I, regretfully, Donald Trump says things, uh, and, you know, as you said, if they were true, would they be? Uh, we don't know whether that's true or not. He is making a statement, uh, but it's, it's very disappointing. It is unconscionable. Uh, it's, you don't have that kind of language in a locker room or uh, in a private context. Uh, we, uh, we need to respect and uplift women, uh, including, uh, well, all, all aspects, and, uh, and that's not doing that in that language. I would like to follow up with that. It's not just that it's language now with a new story coming out that women are saying that he actually acted on the things that he was previously talking about. So going back to someone else's question, um, should those women who were quoted in the New York Times story be believed about what they're describing as sexual assault? Well, uh, I have not looked into that. I don't know the details of that. The public has to weigh that. I think some of these are multiple decades old. Uh, that does not necessarily make a difference. Uh, you know, I think that you've got uh, women that's making complaints of sexual uh, uh, inappropriate conduct on both sides of the fence, and you can ask the same question, should Juanita Broderick be believed? Should uh, the other women that have raised issues uh, be believed? And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I would, as a, as a person, uh, I take all of those allegations very seriously, but in the context of a political campaign, it gets very muddied. And so the American people just have to decide those issues. Thank you all very much.